Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to I Care and You, our first session of 2024. Today, we will be learning all about uveitis. And uh, my name is Sylvia Chengo. I am a Bain Vision and Thomas Bockington Trust intern. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. And that is Dr. Carla Orsin Muta Diaz. Hello, everyone. So um, I would like to, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be sharing this knowledge with you all. It's very good that you are interested in this because it's a very common condition in ophthalmology and in our clinics, in our a &E. So I'm very happy to be here with you and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. So today I will be talking about uveitis. So just to tell you about the image, I put a uh, image with um, a draw of uh, an eye in this first slide with some um, um, flowers, some birds and a bit of the sky to show to you that the eyes can see everything uh, which is around us. And it's um, one of the doors that we see our universe around us. So before we talk about uveitis, I wanted to talk about the eye structure because uveitis may, see, may seem something a bit strange when we think about it because it's not something that's very common in terms of the areas of or the bits of the eyes. So I put a picture of a um, draw of an eye here and this first anterior part of the eye is called cornea, which is the transparent part of the eye on top of the iris, which is the colorful part of the eye that we can see from uh, for each other. Then we have the sclera, which covers all the eye until the back part of it. And it's the white part of the eye. Continue from the iris, we have this red part here that we call choroid. And when we see in our eyes, it's dark. So inside of it, there is the retina. And the retina is formed by two layers, the pigmented layer and the neural layer. These layers are subdivided into 10 layers. And when we think about the uvea, which is the main area that we consider when we talk about uveitis, it's an area that's called a uh, vascular tonic, and it's formed by the iris, the ciliary body, which is behind the iris and connects to the lens, and the choroid. And the name uvea came from the Greek grape because of the dark color of it, and then when we see a grape, dark grape, it reminds us the choroid. So in terms of uveitis itself, the definition, everything in medicine that ends with itis, or this is in the end, reminds us of inflammation. So uveitis is the inflammation of the uvea. So it can be related to one or more components of this uh, uvm. And also it can involve other non-uvial segments. For example, the retina, the optic nerve, and the sclera. The cause or the origin of this inflammation can be related to systemic or ocular causes. When we say systemic, it's, it means there are other conditions that are not related to the eyes. So it's a condition that causes a problem in one of other organs, or it can be related directly and only to the eyes. Because of that, we, we say when we are identifying a person or an eye with uveitis, that's a pattern recognition task. And what does it mean? It means that each condition will present in a different way 
in the eye. And with this hint, we can think about the diagnosis. Also, the non-ocular manifestations are important for us to identify the underlying cause. So if it is a systemic condition causing the inflammation into the eye, we need to assess the patient in all different systems. For example, that's the, one of the reasons why, for example, when the patient comes to the clinic, we ask about other conditions. For, exa for example, stomach, stomach problems or joint pain, joint pain, because the examination and this questionnaire is really important for the identification of the cause. In terms of the normal classification, we do a separation of the areas of the uveitis that are presented. So in terms of anterior uveitis, is an inflammation of the anterior uvea, which is iris and the anterior, anterior ciliary body. This is the most common form of, form of uveitis. And we don't know exactly how it works in some ways. For example, in terms of causes, we have this acute anterior uveitis, which is an umbrella term of the uveitis that we don't know or we cannot find the cause. When it's related to immune problems, it can be related to HLA B27, especially ankylizing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis. Also, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, and sarcoidosis. One of the other causes is the infections. So syphilis, tuberculosis, herpes, and varicella zoster virus. The main symptoms are painful red eye, light sensitivity, and the vision can be reduced or not. The second the part is the intermediate uveitis. And the definition is the inflammation or of the pars plana and peripheral retina. So it's in between the ciliary body and the retina. The causes are idiopathic when it, we cannot find the cause for it, and it, this is the most common. It, when it's immune, it can be related to inflammatory bowel disease, multiple sclerosis, and sarcoidosis. When it's infectious, it can be syphilis, tuberculosis, Lyme disease, which is related to the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria. The symptoms are normally decreased visual acuity, cataract, and normally no pain. The posterior uveitis, the definition is the inflammation of the choroid and the retina. In terms of the causes, again, when we think about idiopathic, this is the most common. When it's related to immune system, it can be sarcoidosis, lupus, bad chest disease, vocoyanaj arada, post-trauma, which is called sympathetic ophthalmia patient. Infectious, it's related to syphilis, tuberculosis, Lyme's, Bartonella, herpes, and cytomegalovirus, toxoplasmosis, and toxocaresis. Symptoms, again, very similar, decreased visual acuity, floaters, and flashes of light, distorted image, and rarely pain. So when, when we say about these different parts of causes of uveitis, we normally separate them in non-infectious and infectious. This means that it doesn't mean that when a patient comes to the clinic, we are going to be able to discover directly just by seeing them that they have a certain type of condition. And that's why we normally run tests, for example, blood tests 
or we refer to another colleague in another specialty because there is um, sim there are similar symptoms in different type of uveitis and indeed with different causes of uveitis. We could see that, for example, syphilis can present in different types of uveitis. When you have a trauma, for example, depending on of the way of the trauma, you can have a different type of uveitis. So that's why it's so important that when a patient comes to us for examination, we do the full assessment, not only the eyes, but we do these questions about other symptoms in relation to the whole body. So with all these causes, who can have uveitis? The short answer is anyone and everyone. Because of this huge amount of causes, if you think, for example, of trauma, anyone can have trauma. Everyone is uh, able to get an infection. Everyone can have an immune or autoimmune condition. But if we think about the highest possibilities, normally the uveitis is more, um, affects more often women and between 20 to 60 years of age and people who smoke. So again, in terms of the symptoms, they are blurry vision, floaters, eye pain, red eyes and light sensitivity. But each person can present with one or more symptom and these symptoms can vary even in the same person. So that's why it's important that the person observes any symptom that pre can present in, the, in their eyes. When you think about complications of uveitis, normally it is related to no treatment. So fortunately, uveitis in the majority of cases can be treated and if left untreated, it can cause retinal swelling, which is called also macular edema. Retinal scarring, which are areas that affected the retina and they are similar to scarring in our skin, for example. So then this area, they cannot see as well as before. Glaucoma is another possible complication, which is related to inflammation of the ciliary body or inflammation of the whole eye. Also, it can be related to the use of steroids, which is one of the treatments that we use, and we are going to talk about that. Cataract is a complication that can happen to everyone, and this happens when we have an opacification of the normal lens that we have behind the cornea, which is the transparent layer, from, from transparent layer in the eye. When we have uveitis, we can have optic nerve damage, and this can happen because of multiple causes. One of them is the glaucoma. Also, we can have infections that affect the optic nerve, or even the swelling of the layers can cause this damage of the nerve. Retinal detachment can also happen. And this is one of the causes that we treat uveitis with surgery. So we are not then treating the uveitis itself, but we are treating one of its complications. Further down in the line, if left untreated, it can progress to permanent loss of vision. Unfortunately, even when we try the best treatments, there are still patients that have permanent loss of vision due to multiple uh, complications of the uveitis. So in terms of the management principles, what we think is inflammation 
is the main cause or this is the main reason why we need to do a treatment. So we need to treat the condition itself. Inflammation is also related to pain. So initially we treat inflammation and pain. If the person has any type of infection, the infection needs to be treated because this is then the cause for the inflammation. In addition, if there is any other secondary cause, we need to do the treatment for this condition. Because when we think about uveitis, the first area that we need to assess is the cause. Because if we can treat the cause, then we can treat the uveitis. Then if we cannot find it, then we go to the management of the inflammation and the pain. And how can we treat uveitis? There are different ways that we can do that. We normally start with eye drops. And these eye drops can be steroids or anti-inflammatory or non-steroid inflammatory eye drops. Also, we can use eye drops to treat some of the complications for example, if someone has glaucoma that's from uveitis, we need to lower the pressure. So we use anti-glaucomatose eye drops. Moving forward in terms of the treatment, we can do oral tablets or intravenous medications. Again, the steroids are the treatment for the inflammation. Also, the non-steroid uh, tablets or uh, intravenous medications can be used. If the person is likely to be using long-term steroids, we need to control this inflammation in a different way because the steroids have a high risk of complications. For example, high blood pressure, diabetes, or glaucoma, we can start using the immunosuppressants. And many of you may have heard about methotrexate, adalimumab, and others that we can use to decrease or even avoid using steroids in the long term. These are very safe medications for the use of um, uveitis patients and they can be used specifically for each type of uveitis. It's really important that we treat the disease in each um, specific way. If you have, for example, an infection with syphilis, we need to use an antibiotic that's gonna treat the condition as well. Because if we only treat the inflammation when we don't treat the cause, the condition that's being created, that is creating the inflammation is gonna be continuing there and gonna continue be causing some damage. Another way we can do it is eye implants or eye injections. And we have in clinic, again, steroids that can be implanted or applied around the eye. And the anti-VEGF, for example, Avastin, which can decrease the inflammation and the complications of uveitis. So now I have a um, picture of an eye showing the different ways we can treat uveitis. So when we say periocular injection, some of you may have heard about the orbital floor injection that we apply steroids around the eyes so it can act in the eye. The topical administration is the normally eye drops. Intravitre injection or implant is when we use an injection inside of the eye to put the medication inside of the eye because there are some barriers for the eye to receive some medication. 
In addition, we can use oral or intravenous medication. And these normally are used when you need more potent steroids or immunosuppressants. In addition, when you want to treat a systemic infection, it's important to treat not only the eye, but also the systemic condition. So when we think about all these complications and all these symptoms that patient can have with uveitis, we think about how can someone live well when they have uveitis? So we learn that when we have the correct treatment, there is a high chance of correction or cure or control of the uveitis. So it's important that the patient adheres to a treatment to avoid these complications. Sometimes when the infect or when the inflammation is caused by rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune conditions, sarcoidosis, or in different type of infections that are related to the whole body, um, patients need to be referred to other specialties, for example, to a rheumatologist. So then the eye team and the other specialty team can advise how the patient can live and can have the correct treatment for that. And the correct treatment is the first step to live well with uveitis because the symptoms are going to decrease, the complications are going to decrease. When we think about the eyes themselves, if a person develops complications and decrease in the vision, we can offer low vision clinics. And in these clinics, we can provide good glasses or the best corrected vision for them. Also, we can provide um, other tools for the patient to live better with the vision they have. In addition, which is very interesting, is the support groups. And many people don't know about them, but they are, there are many that were created by patients or other organs and they can provide information and more tools for the patients to live with uveitis. Also, they can um, join different groups and share stories and hear different stories. So there are different and um, very nice groups that I selected here for us, which are All About Vision, Olivia's Vision, iritis.org, the Ocular Immunology and Uveitis Foundation, and Living with Uveitis. So these groups are from patients and organs that consider that it's important that patients have good knowledge about their conditions so they can understand first the reason why they have to they have the conditions the reason why it's important to have treatment and also they can hear from different um, patients how they are coping and how they are living with their con this condition so this is what I wanted to say about uveitis, and I can open now for your questions. Thank you so much, Carla. That was incredibly insightful. Um, so our next webinar will be on the 13th of February, and it will be all about the eye care support pathway. So please do join us then if you'd like to find out more about that. Thank you.